so we are on federated identity management so far we talked about kerberos which is a single enterprise you can log in anywhere in the enterprise anywhere in the place but nowadays we we have many many companies that work together okay and when you log in at one place they don't want you to log in again at the second place right for example a good example is our health insurance i don't know whether your health insurance works the same way or not but once i go to united health and log in and i want to buy some medicine medco provides the medicine then usc transfer me to to medco now medco believes the same basically believes that i am authenticated and therefore gives me all the services without logging in all right so that is called federated identity management because these two companies are very separate they really don't want to share all the information but they want to share some information in particular they want to they just believe each other's authentications all right for customers and there could be similar cases where um, you buy at one place and pay at some other place you know some sometimes you go to a store and you buy in on the online and then they say amazon payment so you go to amazon and then you know you pay it there and and um, and so they know who who you are in some places it doesn't work for example ebay if you go to paypal you have to authenticate again and so i don't know why they're not set up like that but anyway they could be set up so that you log on once and then you could go to other companies which are related companies and um, and your authentication is maintained that is called federated identity management so so basically the difference between single sign on and the federated identity management is that how many organizations are involved single sign on kerberos etc where for single organization and here we are talking about multiple organization which are multiple security domains so that happens for example employee accessing purchasing sites health insurance providers purchasing sites to shipping sites and and, and you know our payment sites whatever and then identity management is more general than authentication okay so authentication simply means trust yeah agreeing that you are rajain or you are you know whatever you said but identity management requires what it actually more than authentication it's also authorization okay so you are authorized to buy the medicine are you authorized to purchase the thing on behalf of bushtel so there is that kind of things so authentication authorization accounting provisioning workflow automation delegation password synchronization password reset and so on. so there are lots of things which are required for things to work and those are the words here now we already know what is authentication and authorization accounting so be clear that basically keeping a log of you know what you did provisioning if something has to be reserved for you that is called provisioning workflow automation so things have to move from here to there okay if you are going to i mean if you are going to work with a partner there is something that some paperwork which has to go from here to there and that is called workflow automation delegated administration and many of these things are based upon the roles and not by the name so it doesn't really matter who you are it matters who what is your role so if you are a manager or a professor you have a different role than a student or an employee uh, you know or something like that right so so basically that kind of role and then delegation to lower roles sometimes all that is part of this identity management password synchronization and that simply means that if you change the password here maybe they will know that you have changed the password self service password reset you know which we all do is nowadays you know when you want to change the password they ask you certain questions and if you answer them correctly the password gets reset federation is basically making a group so the identity management is more than that and and that is what in the next few slides we will talk about Now, Kerberos provides many of these elements. It does provide authentication, and we can extend it to do more, many of these other things. However, there is much more general standards which have been developed just for federated identity management. So, before we go to the standards, which is the next slide, just the process works as follows: that the user 
goes to the company that has the password identity provider and so that is the step number one and gives its identity and password or whatever ways to authenticate that in parallel or maybe it may be even before that a company administrator puts the data here which says that what is this that this person can do so this person is a manager he can change the salaries he can look at the salaries and so on and so forth so all that information is put here and actually probably it is put you know much before this person comes in this should probably be one and two in that order but anyway once those two pieces of information are there and the person has been authenticated then wherever you want to get the service this one notifies the service provider that okay i have authenticated this user and he is authorized to do this and his role is a manager and then just like we did in kerberos you are given the service according to those instructions the key difference is that these two things the service and the identity providers are two different companies and the technical word for that is security domain so why that two different security domains because not every password or everything that this knows will share with that one and they will not share with that one so it's just only for certain people that they share so this company has its own administrators and people whose password will not be shared here and this company has similarly its own people right so there are two different security domains but for the purpose of this user they are collaborating is it clear so far what is the data identity management there is a standard called saml actually there is one more open id but the book doesn't talk about open id so saml is security assertion markup language so just like html this is saml and it is xml based and using this language you can exchange information such as what is the authorization what is it that this person can do and what you need to account for and all that so all of those communication here number 3 can be done using saml and the book doesn't go any more detail on saml and so we don't need to go more detail but if you ever work for any of these companies and you need to do that then obviously you need to look up the saml standard and um, and probably write software that you know generates saml correctly so there is an organization called osis organization for advancement of structured information standards so this looks like more like you know something that does xml standards you know xml different subsets of different variations of um, xml based them um, stuff so organization for advancement of structured information standard all right and it might have several subgroups some group work on security some group work on purchasing shipping whatever and different standards there are lots of xml based standards so saml is done by a subgroup which is federated identity management now if you look into wikipedia obviously saml is described single sign on is described but also there is something called open id so i put this that reference here i don't really i will not ask about open id because the book doesn't talk about it and i didn't talk about it but if you really need to know much of this then you can read that as well. the main thing in this chapter was actually kerberos and kerberos thing to remember is that it is a symmetric key authentication system it means secret key authentication system it doesn't use certificates it uses a kdc and then the kdc is divided into two parts authentication server and ticket granting server so now you know what is this ticket granting stuff all about why do you need the tgs and um, and then um, and then how you go two steps first you get the ticket for tgs and then you get the ticket for the servers and you keep getting the tickets for the server from the tgs and then kerberos is very widely deployed generally assumes one security domain although you can go to multiple security domains uh, we talked about that you could in the tgss could could have a, a key between them and then version 5 generalizes that design it generalizes the names it generalizes in, encryption schemes it generalizes it allows delegation post date tickets it allows renewals 
and it allows a inter realm hierarchy rather than you know pair by pair see version 4 only did pair by pair realms and version 5 allows a hierarchy so a goes to b b goes to c and so then ac don't have to have a, a, a secret a and c can talk through b so that is version 4 and 5 that was the main part of this chapter then towards the end we added this today federated identity management which is basically multiple companies so there is a standard for saml that you should be aware of and uh, if you <coughs> ever need to implement any of this then you know you probably need to read more about saml we didn't even talk about saml or anything so the homework is um, four questions in Kerberos 4 bob receives a ticket from alice all right, Bob is the server, Alice is the user. So how does the server know that the ticket is genuine? How does he know that it comes from, it came from Alice? How does, when the Alice re gives, receives a reply, how does she know that it is not a replay? And how does the ticket contain? So you have to write one sentence of each of these. So just read carefully the whole chapter, and then the answer would come out, one sentence each. You don't have to write a paragraph. Basically, if you look at that um, message sequence, then there is something in the message that will answer each of these things.